Welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo, and this is my co-host and husband, Steve Green. Are you going to say your own name? No, I would like for you to introduce Steve me. Green. Thank you. Stephen Paul Green. And today, uh, you know what? I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, we're just using this as a shameless plug for our movie that's coming out, Funny Story. Yes. And we got the director and producer and co-writer, Michael Gallagher, here. Hello. And we have the lead, the star, the main man, Matt, Matthew Glaive. The main Glaive. squeeze. C- celebrity actor, Matthew Glaive. That's right. Actor yes. hand model. You've seen him in a bunch of shit, so make sure to watch uh, the, if you watch the feed on YouTube, you can actually see his face and you're like, oh, I've seen him in all kinds of shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously, sometimes I'm watching like a random movie or like Narcos and it's like, oh, there's Matt again. Yeah, every time. <laughs> I watch anything and Matt shows up, oh, I yeah, swear. Matt, that's you, Matt. You're probably in Game of Thrones, even we though you just... probably don't know you were. What were we no. watching in the theater? We were watching something in the theater the other day and you were just on a tarmat. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, you like had a cell phone. Was, and... uh, no. Tarmac? Yeah. That was um, First Man. Yeah, oh. Damien Chazelle. Oh, yes. that was what it was. Yes, first it was First Man. man. Yeah. First Man. Yeah. That they didn't have day, cell phones yeah. then. Well, it was a couple months ago, but yeah. But yeah, point being, yes. That was just another time where we were like, oh, shit, we had yeah, no we idea. Yeah, we were just yeah, he was just like, oh. And then he's such a humble we man. We people. He doesn't talk about this stuff. He doesn't name drop this shit. No, look at his face right now. He's like, this? <laughs> we're talking about this? Dude, I would be like, <laughs> yo, you guys you guys heard of this movie first, man? I'm in this fucking movie everywhere I go. Yeah. No matter who I talk to. It's every, all my social medias, all my people yep. would know about it every day. But he, but him, you hang out with him. He doesn't even tell you this shit. Yeah, he doesn't have countdowns on his Instagram. 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 Five days until you see me in this movie. He's so mysterious. He doesn't even have an Instagram, really. I don't know how to access my Instagram account. (laughs) He is locked out of it. So you have one, but you can't. I have one, but I keep trying to get in, and it won't. I got my daughter set it up. (laughs) What you do? You get banned for nudes. It's set to private. And it's literally has he has a couple of followers, but you have to request the followers the are my followers. old neighbors. <laughs> so we tag him in all the posts for funny story, and I think he has like hundreds of requests. He just doesn't know how to. Actually oh, get so in. that's why I haven't been added. <laughs> I thought you were just like really elite, and like it was like Super a really elite. exclusive no. Instagram club. No, like <laughs> all the, all the followers on Instagram have the same last name because it's my neighbor's family. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for them. Everything you post is for them. So we talked about Funny Story in previous episodes, but now that uh, our movie's coming out, and I said our movie because Steve also co-wrote and co-produced executive. it. Executive. Pro- executive produced Thank it, you very much. And I'd play a supporting role in it. Um, you play but, the role of Brian, a very integral role. Yes, my name is Brian, no spoilers. And I play the role of a centaur, but I'm not going to spoil it. That's a spoiler. <laughs> That's totally no, I didn't spoil it. Okay. <laughs> okay, but now Funny Story is going to be available. When is it a release when to the public? When is this podcast out? Well, we're going to make it so that it's available. It's available now. Yeah. It's you on just got a- lectured to. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, a window into my world, dude. The movie, <laughs> funny story, is on iTunes right now. Yes. Go watch it at home. Is it only on I iTunes? What else we got? ITunes. It's also on and going to be in theaters. That's right. Well, by the time you're listening to this, you sh- it's in your local theater. Yeah. Because it's going to be in every theater. It's every be single in every theater. theater? What's the name of the movie? Don't double check that, but it's going to be in theater. Don't I'm get sorry, all their panties did you, wet. Did you guys say the name of the movie? It's funny, funny story. story. Maybe sorry, they probably, thought we yeah. were just talking about a funny story. That, that's true. That we never actually said the funny story, but that's the name of the movie. It's funny story. Yeah, by the time you're listening to this, you can watch it at home on iTunes, on demand, Amazon, that kind of thing. Or you can go out to a movie theater, which for the younger kids is a place where people watch movies together, mm, not at home. Yes, without oh, their phones. Michael, this is yeah. always one of my favorite things to ask a fellow uh, writer, all this shit. How do you pitch the movie? To people, because you know how we go to social things in LA all the time and stuff, and people are like, "What have you been working on?" Yeah. And then you say, "Oh, I did this movie called Funny Stories coming on in a couple weeks," and then they go, "Oh, what's it about?" And then you're like, "Here we go." You know what I mean? What's your What's your quick elevator pitch? What's the pitch? Yeah. What do you just What do you say? It's about a uh, famous actor father who is trying to reconnect with his grown up daughter, and in trying to rebond their relationship, accidentally ends up ruining her life. Mm. That's your. I like That's it. That's my elevator. Point. I like it because like it. it's intriguing. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't tell you everything, yes. but it gives you enough where you're like, oh, some shit's going down. So you may might want to check it out or ask follow up questions. Matt, how do you pitch it to people? How do I pitch it? I started it with um. I started it with an asshole who ruined his family and tries to reconnect with his adult estranged daughter. Mm. Nice. And, a little darker. I like it. But I mean, but it's a great comedy. Yes. <laughs> 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 no, it's funny. Matt, Matt sees the movie kind of on the more dramatic side, and it's been interesting playing it at film festivals and showing it to people because we get wildly different reactions. Some people, we went, we showed the movie in Alaska, in Anchorage, Alaska, 
And the audience there was like, this is a parody of people from Los Angeles. <laughs> like, that's how they saw the movie. They're like, this is a total satire on L.A. and L.A. Oh, culture. That's funny. And woke and all that kind that's of stuff. That's weird. And we're like, sure. Sure. <laughs> it's that to you. Whatever you want to be, baby. And then we showed it at, you know, places like Sonoma. And the people there were like, this is our story. Like, we're, we're you know, we're 65 years old. We haven't been talking to our children in years. Like, we have new families that we've set up. And we've been estranged from our loved ones. But we love this movie because we connect with it on a deep, dramatic level. I talked to some cats at, at Slam Dance, and they pulled me aside and they're like, "Hey, man, this movie is my life." Yeah, and I'm like, "Wait, are you saying like what are you saying exactly?" They're like, "Walter is me," and I'm like, "That's right. Remember those two guys? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, two they, guys. they were like, like, oh, yeah, I am Walter, and I thought they'd make a great T-shirt." <laughs> right. I am so Walter. we got merch down below. Merch. Click below. Yes, there's please. a link. Yeah, right. merch. Click Hope to the link. You're Walter. Buy the shirt. <laughs> and if, if, if you're more of an Emily, uh, you know, you can buy that shirt. Too. <laughs> and if no one has seen the movie, it could just they'll maybe think you're a Breaking Bad fan. It's yeah. super esoteric. Yeah, but the movie it's a dramedy. It's a it's a family dramedy that's not for kids. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard to sell the movie because it's kind of in the, the tone of sideways about kind of. People who aren't, you know, upstanding citizens who are trying their best but kind of fucking everything. Well, that's up what I like is that everyone's so flawed, but they're yeah. like that's what makes them, you know, people. They're real. Yeah. See, yeah. I feel that to pique most of people's interest because I sort of watched, um, I watched their interest and then I see the light leave their eyes a little bit, and so I decided to juice it a little harder. Oh, let's hear your Go pitch. Ahead. Okay, yeah. so my pitch is, um, a, a, an older actor who is estranged from his daughter because he was in like a Hercules the Legendary Journeys like level TV show in New Zealand, so he doesn't know his daughter, decides to reconnect with her um, and on the way to to go visit her, because she's going to an extended three day weekend with her friends, um, he picks up her friend because her friend's stranded. And on the way, he has sex with her friend and because uh, they get drunk. And then when he gets there, he discovers, oh, shit, that's not my daughter's friend. That's my daughter's girlfriend. My daughter's a lesbian. I didn't know this because I'm estranged. And, oh, shit, this isn't, like, an extended three-day weekend for us all to hang zone and, like, just chill and play racquetball. Like, my daughter's here to get married. And what the fuck is he going to do? And so that's how you give and away roll the, the first, credits. And yeah, you give away and, the first uh, spoilers. And I can tell you what happens, and then, actually. And then Steve um, tells wait, you all the credits. are you really going to include that in the podcast? And <laughs> yeah. they're, they're not going to watch it. No, 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 because what's he going to do? That's the, that, that, to me, is what the movie's about. Can you at least, oh. right before, put a little sound effect and like, ha-ha, spoiler, ha-ha. You know, can you do yeah, like a little... You know, I'll just use you, what you just did. Ha-ha. <laughs> spoiler. That spoiler. would be the best. Yeah. Because I'm completely opposed to yeah. giving anything away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I disagree because you got to juice the intro. I totally do. I agree with you. I agree with you. You know why, you don't have huge jugs or nothing we can put on the poster, man. I know. <laughs> I know. Right. I know that. I know. He's that. working fault. on it. We I don't should. know why. You got a, you got a, a bunch of hotties in the movie. No reason not to put them all in the so true. poster. That's an you know? absolute fact. Right? I agree. You know Said what? Put a picture that's, of a brace That should be your something. pitch. It, it's a bunch of hotties, <laughs> and then one of them's dad. <laughs> The That's dad right. kind of like ruins the one of their lives. Right. Yeah. With the with the real wrong, hotties though. With the wrong marketing campaign, they could have done a photo shoot where they like got like a stock footage of like a woman's legs and then a bunch of heads poking oh, out. Oh, I underneath. love this. You know, like from the eighties, it's, where it's really like good. a Porky's type poster. Yeah. And it's like, what happens? It's a funny story. And that would be the wrong way to go. The right way to go is movie, a picture of a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is a nuanced and layered nuanced. portrait. It's one of those art films. It's an yeah, art film. It is. There's lens flares. But it's fun, man. It doesn't take <laughs> itself too seriously. It's very fun. No. It's very fun. It's one of those movies where I think the the less you know, the more you actually are surprised by the things happening. But even with the description you said, there's still a ton of stuff that that's goes what on I'm saying happens. To me, the movie is about what's what's he gonna do. That to me, I, and I know I, I actually agree with you, Matt. Where it's like you don't want the spoilies out there because it's really fun to watch it with an audience and they don't know what's going on. They're like, oh shit, oh shit. Like I love all that's that. That's been the, that's been the greatest joy of sitting in the theater is when the turn. Yes, but when, when the turn happens, it the whole movie the be, the movie begins. It's just interesting. It takes 15 minutes. Yeah, about 15, 15 minutes, 16 yeah. minutes for the movie to begin. But the setup's all fun because it's kind of like moving yeah. along. But then when it hooks, and then it goes right into introducing everybody. Yeah. And it just takes, and it's just like, oh shit. It's I, such a great oh shit. I do yeah. agree with that a lot. But every trailer that I watch, they usually do give away the first spoiler. The first The act. first, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. the first I know. hook. I know. Just because that's what lures people into watching it. I mean, we, you guys have been on the festival circuit, so people that bought tickets, like they're obviously there to watch all the movies. They're they're gonna watch all the movies, and then they get the benefit of 
getting that first spoiler yeah. and, not, and not knowing. But for the main, the public out there that's like has a bazillion movies to choose from to spend their time watching, I think you do need like a little bit of a yeah. I mean, we're definitely in like a, a war of attention with like these yes. TV shows yeah. and movies and YouTube internet. Stuff. Every, yeah, yeah I mean, so it's just like Game of Thrones, they gotta throw in a titty scene every five minutes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta have somebody's butt walk by. But titties by way, aren't I, even enough. I, I have to give a shout out to like this SNL sketch with Andy Samberg that they made fun of Game of Thrones like in the first season, where it was like, "We meet the writing staff," and it's literally Andy Samberg is like a thirteen-year-old boy with braces. That's and, like, great. Nipples. He's like, "I think they should be naked." In this <laughs> oh, season. It's great! It's exactly. really funny. It's great because if you watch that show, it's um, it's like, yeah, probably. Dude, I just love all the people being all studious about Game of Thrones. Like, man, I don't know. Like, it's, it's so heady. The cinematography. They spend eight twenty-five million dollars an episode, or whatever, and I'm like. Come on, man. It's the Bachelor jacuzzi scenes every 10 minutes or so, which is great. That's yeah. what we all love. Medieval Bachelor scenes. Yeah. It's so the Game of Thrones is the Bachelor set in medieval. They're the same. Time. They're the same. <laughs> How dare people act like the Bachelor is somehow except worse? Except she doesn't give out like four roses. She gives out four heads. Yes, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. It's like, guess what? The stakes You're, are higher. You get to right? be on the show. You get to be off the show. Hey, guess what? You're off the show now, asshole. That happens every week. Am I wrong? It's the same shit as The Bachelor. Everyone pretending like all these middle-aged white ladies are so wrong to be obsessed with The Bachelor, and they're so much headier because they like Game of Thrones. I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> this is this is a good analysis. The same shit. Yeah. So, funny story <laughs> yes. was on the festival circuit all of yes. last year. How was that experience traveling and getting to take it? You picked up a lot of awards too. Oh yeah, right? let's brag won, about it. The movies won like over a dozen. Say awards we. Or something. We. we, yes, we. we have won so many yes, awards. Thank you. Yeah. It's a and we're royal gonna brag award. it. We're gonna yes. brag about it. Um, well, no, the movies played all over. It premiered at Slam Dance in Park City, which is the festival where like Christopher Nolan's first movie played, and Lena Dunham, and uh, I'm trying to think who else. Or, uh, Paranormal Activity premiered there. Like it's a really cool indie festival for like very small movies. Um, and so this movie, like, kind of took off from there. We got invited to a bunch of film festivals. It played in Mallorca, Spain, which wow. I had to get a map to figure out yeah. exactly where that is because I'm not so the not most well traveled. international <laughs> yeah. person. But it's this amazing place. It's it's incredible. Best place. The is best it? place. Oh. Yeah. And that is like you're. I want to go to Europe. Yeah. Go to Mallorca. Go to Mallorca. Oh man, I've been okay. all over Europe, but never went to Mallorca. It's that easy. It's incredible. It's that easy. Because it's, wow. it's like you get ruins and beaches and just beautiful scenery and, and great beaches. people. Ru and yeah. everyone is happy <laughs> and the food is great. Oh, it's just. Are they topless on the beach? Uh, you know, we didn't you can be topless anywhere you want I in think, Mallorca. I have a very short attention span. I need to have some sort of need it to be topless. <laughs> but the coolest thing there is that they screened Funny Story. We were the opening night movie, and they screened it in a freaking opera house that had a thousand seats. It was originally built in the 1600s. Everyone was in black wow. tie. Wow! Literally, everyone's in black tie. There are all these like span, really, really wealthy Spaniards coming out, and they literally flew in Melissa Leo and Mads, Mads Mikkelsen, the actor. And they both For got awards. awards. And literally they had an award ceremony where they each got trophies and made a little speech. And then they were like, and now, funny story. <laughs> That's wow. funny, man. And then they screened the movie and it like killed. It, like, it just killed. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Killed. And we had seen the movie so much at that point we were going to like sneak out and just like have dinner or something. But we were like, I don't know. We kind of ought to watch it here. Just That's a pretty sick place to see it. And literally, and it, was, it had Spanish subtitles, you know, because you, you never know if people are bilingual or whatever. But the movie played really well. And it got like a standing yeah. ovation at the end. Wow. And, and, I mean, we were literally in a small island in Spain. <laughs> and the movie's like connecting with people. And people coming up after. Oh, they were from, crazy for it. Whether they were from like Scandinavian countries. Because I mean, there are people all over come to Mallorca and it's like the it's kind of like the Hawaii of Europe like oh, it's close it's okay. like it's yeah like it's like a massive uh, escape vacation place but it's all old 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 architecture and brick streets and just That's absolutely so cool. romantic place to be Absolutely romantic. Mallorca. Yeah, you just you sold me on Mallorca more than the movie. I'm gonna go to Mallorca. Go to Mallorca. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the movie. The water's lovely. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Uh, it, you yeah. know, we highly recommend Mallorca. But the um, the festival was so cool because like everyone who came up to us were like, this really connects with us. I mean, there's this actor, uh, uh, Cole Meany, who's in a bunch of stuff. He's like this great Irish actor. He came up to us and he's like. Uh, this happened to me. <laughs> he like huh? he like t and then just like went into it like as Which the credits were rolling. No, he like told us like he was. We can't say 
doing? Yeah, we can't say. <laughs> anyway, come on. He's uh, so protective. I love him. I'm protective of our, of our friend. I love it. He our, was a Walter or friends. he was a Jana? He's a, I think people connect with whoever or he was they're an closest Walter. with in life. Yeah, more mm. of Walter. Okay. Because I think Walter. He loved the film. Yeah. Well, I think I think the character of Walter in this, you know, he's a he's an actor who was known for this like Hercules type show called Young Blood, And he was very famous for this role. And then after that, he's. He's just kind of been living on convention money and residuals and things. And he has a pretty good life, but he's kind of known for this one thing. And in the process of pursuing that career, he sort of abandoned his family. And so he has all these kind of like ruins left about about his life. And at this point, when we see him in the movie, Walter is trying to am make amends and reconnect and fix those things. He's like, oh, I kind of forgot about this for 20 years. Now I'm going to pick it back up. And and I think a lot of people do that in their lives. Mm. I, I, when we were writing the movie, I thought the story was like much more like small and specific and it wasn't necessarily gonna relate to everyone because it was a little bit more personal for me. But in just talking to people and showing it, it's like, it's amazing how that this is such a common thing for, for people you know, in their 60s or so that have like lived life and maybe started to, you know, been divorced, had children, have you know younger children. They're kind of coming into themselves and figuring out like, oh, like, there's all these lives that I got to reconnect with. Huh. Like I just watched this um, John Lennon documentary, Imagine. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's, huh. like, it's from the 80s, but it's like all the home footage of John and Yoko, and it's like takes you through his whole life, and you get to see all this intimate stuff. But he had a kid when like the Beatles were in their heyday in like the 60s, and then he didn't reconnect with him until like 20 years later. Julian and Lennon, he, yeah. the very famous. Julian, uh, yeah, Julian Lennon, yeah. yeah. So he reconnected with Julian Lennon like years later and was like, I was a shitty dad. Yeah. And like the movie really gets into that and like him saying that. So like John Lennon is Walter in a way. It's like this story kind of keeps coming up again and again. Like people are trying their Actually, best. Actually, I was but... channeling John Lennon for the role. <laughs> Love it. A yeah. lot of my behavior was John that. Lennon. The, um, <laughs> The interesting thing about the film that's been the most enjoyable has been these wild interpretations. And the ending is the wonder the ending is magnificent of the film because it's not it's it's like slightly open to interpretation, although obvious, but not. So different people what what um, what we get out of it is almost like out of a therapy session. Everyone gets their own experience at the end yeah. where you have been through some shit. And so <laughs> that's what you come away with. Or you're like, oh, it's really sad. Or, oh, oh, it's really going to be good. And it's like everyone lays their own baggage mm -hmm. on the film. And the older the person is, the more baggage, the more, the more banging the table. <laughs> no, the, you know, and, and it's, it's been so fascinating hearing responses. And it's hard not to, to, to tell the movie because it's a good secret movie to not want to give it away. But the responses from some people that have been like either very sober and, and not forgiving. And in, early on, Michael was telling in interviews that the movie was about forgiveness. And it was about forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's sort of a redemption thing. It's like, it's, like it's, a, it's a come to Jesus type moment for everyone to go like, everything hits the fan and then we're in a new place. And you are either on the other side or you're still holding. And it's really interesting how some people, yeah. a lot of people close to me, have had the most aggressive things to really? say. Really? Yeah, very like, like surprising. What? I can't say, <laughs> because the, say. the dialogue <laughs> gives it away. It's the worst. Yeah. But you're like, like Walter has nothing to apologize for? Like that <laughs> No, kind of no, thing? it's not like I'm defending that Walter doesn't have anything to apologize for, it's just that there is no forgiveness there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some, oh. people, some people see the actions that the characters take Some people seeing Walter being killed and things like that. It's like, <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> wow, okay. I can picture the type of person who would say this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, I think the movie is kind of a Rorschach test for anyone who's like bringing their own baggage to it. They might see it as a like a delightful, fun comedy. They might see it as like a really heavy drama that made them like think about some shit that they've done in their life yeah. and they're not ready to address it. Or it's like, oh, I've been screwed over by people like this and I hate those people and I'm never gonna forgive them. Yeah. And so I watch this movie and I hate and I'm angry mm -hmm. because That's I have so, so much resentment because I haven't forgiven, I haven't done that work. So right. it's like when you talk to someone who's seen the movie, you kind of get a sense of like where they're at themselves with other people if they've been fucked over if they feel like they've made amends like yeah you kind of like learn a lot dude for me stuff. it's fun because i because you know having written the movie with you and all this shit it's like i just wanted to keep fucking with walter as much as possible <laughs> know. you know what i mean so like yeah. i'm almost like at the zoo eating popcorn watching this guy just get slammed around 
Like, because like, it's fun. Because that's what's fun for me the is watching. Yes, yeah. and just watching his face just constantly melt as he realizes he fucked up again. Like that's for me. That was what I loved the, the most about uh, about even watching it back. I just love watching Matt get like you're he's just a perfect punching bag and and <laughs> and because he knows that he deserves it he takes the hits and he's like you know kind of he he's he but he's still funny about everything he's very he's very you're very funny well what's what was fascinating was when michael first sent me the first trailer that was being put together for it i was of course completely opposed to it and yes. and but and and maybe too idealistically so because you do need to give it away you need to give some stuff away to get people to want to see something but on his own, he comprised another thing that he added an element to, and it was two. I don't know if he's shown them to you. Yes, yes. I'm sure he has. But it was so fascinating to see two separate trailers that were almost two separate movies because one was so wacky, fun, and sex rom. <laughs> yeah. And the other one was like, oh, you done fucked up. Yeah. Like, this is a big, it was more like, wow, ramifications, ramifications, human behavior, yeah. ramifications. And it, honestly, both hit it from two angles. Yes. And the one could gra grab an entire audience, the other one could go like, oh, I'll take a piece of that. Because it was a different piece of pie. Mm -hmm. One was a good romp, and one was like, ooh, you bit off too much. And it's like, and you're off. That's what I love about it. I've seen the movie so many times, and my favorite thing to brag about the film is how tremendously lean the movie is. There's no fat. Mm -hmm. It is a lean film. There's no hanging around. There's no music score to tell you how to feel. There's no extra said words. It's just been trimmed and cut, and then, and if you don't get it, it, leave, it it's an intelligent film, well made because it was it, it doesn't leave you it doesn't spell anything out for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It leaves you to go like, oh, what are you gonna do now? And it just goes to the next. It doesn't re say anything. Doesn't go over old ground. And I mean, there were scenes that were cut uh, that I would love to have had in it because no one likes to have stuff on the cutting room floor. But in the bigger picture, not necessary and well done to lose it, which is a huge. Um, you know, sort of a, a great insight to be able to to do, you know, to yeah. see what you don't need. Right. Like how hard is that to yes. have written so much, have so much, make so much and go, this is great. And then just going like, and yeah, then kill but, your babies. But watch, but watch what happens as it gets, it gets like this and it gets down into a fighting speed and then it just shoots out. And, and it's been so great watching their response. I'm such a proponent for killing babies. It's actually insane. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely, I almost get off on it. <laughs> oh and God. when I'm in writer's rooms with people. We should say in metaphorical context. babies. Yes, metaphorical babies. Oh, Thank no, you. real, metaphorical real actual babies. <laughs> babies. No. Uh, no, no. Uh, the script ideas. No, because I used to be such a protective fiend about that stuff, especially like when I was younger. But to but now to take it away from people when they're really excited about something, to take it away from them and see how they deal is so interesting. Like uh, like if I'm in a writer's with, with somebody and they're stuck on a joke, I try to take the joke from them to see if the scene works without it. And then if they can see that it can work without it, then they can see what the scene's really about. Yeah. It's not about your joke. Right, right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Not getting hung up on the ego of a performance mm -hmm. in any direction and just staying with the, the, the line. Yes. Staying in the line, and that's that's been a, it's been a treat watching people enjoy it. Did you ever have a reaction that you guys weren't expecting, like something just wild? <laughs> um, the overwhelming joy, honestly, the overwhelming joy from the Mallorca audience when I have the phone call with my best friend and he's telling me what he wants to do to his daughter's girlfriend was like, they're a very forgiving people they were over there in Mallorca. They were like, oh, that's a whole different place. That's a whole different, whole different mindset. That is a monologue that a 13 year old boy wrote. You know what I mean? Like, oh boy. Yeah. But some people don't grow up. I feel like, I mean, I just turned 30 and congrats. I, thank you. Welcome to the dark side. And I've Old had, man. I've had the same haircut since I was 14. That's for and sure. And so I, in, in like some sad way, I don't see myself that different than when I was 14 or 15. I think yeah. like, I don't know, maybe it's different for women, but for men, I think you mature to a certain degree and then you're kind of stuck there and your body just changes and you're just getting older. And it's like, but you're mentally, you're sort of in some some mindset that you were in always like you you, you don't really see yourself as different ages hmm. um i don't know i feel like uh that's maybe maybe that's just me I don't dude know. And that's so funny because we wrote that monologue and he's like a 50 year old man giving the monologue but yeah. we're too you know like 20 we were i was like yeah. 28 or something yeah, exactly. right in that shit and you're what you were 26 i think yeah it's 26 yeah so it's right. you know that's that's how universal like once you're grown up you're grown up i think yeah um, <laughs> well, that, any comments? No, well, I don't know anything about grown up. <laughs> I'm saying that um, but when like, I first read yeah. the script, I didn't like that scene. 
Oh yeah, you really didn't. I did you, not like you, it at you all. Had a lot I of kept notes. telling him I had notes about how to change it. What scene was it? It was the scene, the with Peter Gardner. Gardner. Yeah, oh, the oh, scene, gotcha, the gotcha. scene with the the teenage girls. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm, I, I don't like this. I got teenage daughters, and I don't want to be in a movie that is like. It just it was rubbing me the it was the wrong but there age are guys for like me. That. Yes, there are guys it was for me. It was rubbing me the wrong way. Now, in Peter Gardner's hands, it's it's magnificent. He's incredible, yeah. right? So it's a it's a obviously that's a it's a touch. How to lay a touch on something? Right. And he yeah. completely does it. If it was Tom Sizemore, maybe call the cops. That's what I'm saying. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Right. I get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and it's just it's yeah. Yeah, I was going to say something else. And, well, okay, so for those out there who have not seen the movie yet, what is something that you personally are looking forward to them seeing the most? I, I mean, I think just based on I, if anyone has seen anything else that we've done, I mean, because we've written so many movies and I've directed some, and, and it's like you watch these other movies we've done and they've, they're they all different, you know? They're all different genres. This one is a comedy and we've done other comedies, but this is a really uh, like heartfelt Kind of movie, mm-hmm. and I don't think people would be expecting that. Very grounded, no, God, no. <laughs> yeah. From the kind of stuff that we've done before, which has been a little more heightened. I wouldn't have expected it. Capital C comedy. This is like yeah. a, you know, this is a different gear. One of so. my favorite. Um, this is not interactive sex. No. no. <laughs> One of my favorite realization moments that I've had in life with um, with Michael uh, was when we did a table read for the thinning. We did our first table read for the thinning, and that's the first non comedy we wrote. And we hadn't sold it yet. Nothing like we were in a table. We were in a table with nine people, yeah. like a, like just close friends yeah, of ours. Because we, when we're just to give you some context, Steve and I have written like I don't know ten scripts or something. And whenever we're writing, we get to a point where we're like we think it's good, but now we need other people to read it out loud. We need to put it on its feet and see if this thing like makes any sense. Yeah. And so, and we we're pretty hard on ourselves. Like we like to to get notes. We like we don't want to just have people congratulate. We want to say like no, this isn't working. We didn't understand this. We want to get feedback so we can make we want to hurt the child as strong as possible yeah so so then um we're in there and as they're reading these intense scenes of these kids getting taken to like like rooms where they're gonna get killed because they took this test and they failed the test dystopian future our friend shauna malcolm's like laughing her ass off yeah because she knew knew all the comedy stuff we did and pretty much exclusively and this is the first 15 pages of the movie so me and michael are sitting there like oh shit why is this getting laughs this is like murdering the room like why are we getting so many laughs because she sees us and goes they're they're comedy guys this is a comedy movie they're just writing if it's serious toned it's being it's satire then but that's yeah. an interesting that's an interesting thing that when you do certain things people can't imagine you doing anything else. Right. Exactly. They can't imagine it. Yeah. And so they're just they're laying again, they're laying their discrimination on top of something. And so they're seeing it through that filter only. Yeah. And it's that yeah. exact thing. And mm-hmm. And it's like you said about they're not really reading it as it is. They're reading it as they think it should be because they know who you are. And it's right. like you they said about Pete yeah. Gardner, right? He's doing an, uh, a monologue about some dark thoughts that he's having about his daughter's friends. And that's intense thing to read. But when Pete Gardner performs when it, when he does it, it's, it's completely, light. Yeah, it's his it, touch. Yeah. It's yeah. fluffy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's eating donuts. Yeah. And, yeah. Pete, and Pete Gardner, um, if you guys are listening at home, uh, he's uh, on CW's uh, Crazy Ex Girlfriend. He plays the boss. He's, he's amazing. Hilarious. Yeah. That show. He's, he's great excellent. on that show. And he's been in a lot of fun things over the years. Yeah, he's great. No. Consummate professional. Yes. <laughs> Hard to work with. No, not at all. I'm just saying. We are going to take a quick break, really quick, and then we're going to come back and talk more about the movie. And I have some questions, some very, some very hard hitting questions. questions. For us? I have some very hard hitting questions. Okay. Uh, yes. We're going to call our attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, are you listening to Shit They Don't Tell You? Because if not, how are you listening to this ad about Shit They Don't Tell You? because they can't turn it off. They don't know how to they turn, it, how turn it, off. it off. Well, that's pretty convenient for They're us. They're throwing their phone on the ground right now. Once you can it figure it, it out, could you please rate us and subscribe and like um, tell us that we're beautiful? Listen. We, we want it. We need the validation, We, but mostly we need the ratings because, I mean, that's basically how the world is, is run, my friend. how we continue to make more and more and more of this content, this glorious content that you love so much. If you like the show, support the show. And if you don't like the show, support the show. And it's for free. The the stars are for free. Yeah, you give them you give them away for free. It's not like if you give five stars, you pay more money. They should have charged for every single star. I would have made so much money. <laughs> <laughs> and it just made a killing. All right, and we're back. Uh, yeah, so I told you I had some questions. <laughs> 
before okay, going on this. Roll. That's how we do break. <laughs> I wanted to like have a beard when you came back, right? <laughs> I was kind of like, like hey, mid zip. What's up? <laughs> okay. All right. So as you were talking about, you uh, started not in this genre. You wrote a lot of other things. Um, you did a, directed a lot of over the top sketch comedy, teen horror, with Smiley. Uh, as Nikki well Limo's as, been in a lot of this stuff. Oh, too. I have. Yeah, my name is everywhere. And talk about um, playing a certain. A certain type of role and people not being able to see you play anything else. Uh, it was a very specific type of role I played in these things <laughs> for a while, and that's all anyone would cast me as. Yeah, Nikki um, got typecast by me as a hot girl, yeah. as as you a know, hottie, a He's a terrible person human for this. But, but no, not just as... you though. Like like everybody, <laughs> like everybody. Well, it's funny too because yeah. you've, you've as we've you know known each other over the years, like, getting to know you. Like you were saying, like that was never the person you were growing up, and you sort of like started playing this part, yeah, because you got cast that way. But you as a as Nikki is in in inside Nikki mm -hmm. is not that inside person. edition Nikki. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my acting coach had told me to start playing more roles like that, like to sex I it see. up a little, like get more ditzy, get more. Or like pretty sounding, <laughs> hot sounding. Pretty sounding. Because you know? he's pretty basically sounding. like, he's like, uh, yeah. so amazing. But I wrote a yeah. sketch about this that Casim G played that you directed yeah, that yeah. were like, basically he was like, yeah, so people see this and they're like, oh, I know who you are. And then you start talking and then they're like, oh, now we don't know who you are. We, we don't know where to put you. And so then they don't cast you. And so you just got to change this to match this and then you'll get cast. And I'm like, oh man. I wasn't going to cast her as my wife until I saw a picture of her fat when she was younger. And I was like, I get you. Now. That's so true. He yeah. saw a picture of me fat as a 15 year old and he's like oh now we I could know. date yeah now I know that you're cool <laughs> that's what he, oh, that yeah. actually happened yeah. Yeah, it's um, funny, one of those funny stories you know but yeah so so and then the the dystopic teen thriller thinning so why the franchise the, the thinning franchise, franchise. Yes. thank you the trilogy the well hit, almost sure. trilogy. which Matthew Glaive plays Governor Dean Redding that's right and spoiler alert uh president-elect Dean it's a big spoiler, <laughs> Michael. Sorry, We're anti-spoiler on the show, Michael. That's I hope huge. we play the same I'm spoiler. Music there weren't any that. ditzy hot girls in that movie, so I that's cannot, for sure. Yes. I was not in that one. In the future, there are no hot people. There are no. They, there they are don't no pass the hot test. People yeah. in the future. They lost the. They, <laughs> they, the they, 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 they all fail the test every year. That's what happens. <laughs> but they died pretty okay. Um, but there so, are fights with people's shirts off, so that's there is a certain factor. Sexy dude, you're going for. You're drilling the sequel right now, my friend, and there's a really good couple fight of scene. fight scenes shirtless fight scenes between two men yeah mm -hmm. who are sweating and so we got like, we got charles melton from riverdale and he knew taekwondo and he came in there and fought <laughs> in a cage ring all day he shaved his entire body and fought in a cage all day <laughs> and literally they were just like oiling him up and i'm like <laughs> i know who the demographic is it's oh, young so women. <laughs> good man so the question is yes. why this story then why, why story? and why now well it's funny because we wrote this movie in like i don't know 2014 2015 and it took kind of a, an interesting turn because in my own life, like I had been a little disconnected from my own dad. And then he just came back to me one day and was like, hey, like I'm having a kid. And I said, oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. And like you came all the way, like unexpectedly, you just showed up and wanted to tell me this. And I was like, that is such an interesting story. Like we got to that was like the kernel that set it off mm -hmm. because the character of Walter isn't really my dad right it's just but the event that that happened in my own life kind of like sparked this thing and because Walter is kind of a combination of, of a lot of actors we know and we've worked with over the years like character actors you know people that are trying their best but like have kind of you know done some damage along the way and so it was sort of a combination of those two things and then just our desire to mix it up and and do the kind of movies we watch like sideways or right um, like the graduate you know things that are kind of like funny but dramatic and heartfelt and like connect with you in a real way and you know leave you with you know kind of thinking about your own life yeah because i think this is the first movie that is like like i'm a demographic that would watch this you know <laughs> yeah thank well, you yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well it's you know it's tough because when you when you start out making stuff you can you can just make things for yourself right you know, and say I'm the, I'm the audience for this and then you'll find other people because I like this or you can say you know I want to make something for in a certain genre yeah in a, for a certain audience well and for the younger generations I think those tickets sell a lot more it's, it's easier it's like that's that's where the the big box the eyeballs office, are yeah. in the box office yeah and it's tricky too because coming from doing sketch comedy on YouTube and working like with a lot of YouTube comment it was very centered on youth oriented content like mm -hmm. doing stuff for teens and so that was kind of our world for a while and so it almost got in my head like that's those are the people that watch mm -hmm. and because I'm transitioning from doing stuff on YouTube to feature films it's like okay well I want to 
I want to be able to speak to those people that have been watching stuff online. And so we did that for a few years with these types of movies geared for them. But then at a certain point, it's like, well, those aren't the real movies that I like to watch or see. Like yeah. We, yeah. we watch all kinds of things and we like more mature stories. And so um, this was an opportunity to say, like, let's let's shift into that gear. Let's try something that's more. Hard Plus, your audience is definitely aged with you because yeah. uh, I get stopped by like 20 something year olds and they're like, Dude, I used to watch you in middle school. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> How it's always old the T sketch audience. In sixth grade, I watched you. I'm like, what? That happens to me. I'm like, not old. <laughs> whenever I'm like at a restaurant, uh, like a waiter person or a, you know, barista or something, they'll say that and then they'll char- they'll be like, yeah, it'll be ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't it's like enough cred to be like recognized, yeah. but not to actually get anything for free. Damn. <laughs> I know. I somehow missed the swag option. Yeah, of, of you missed notoriety. The cut. You missed the cut. Please, give, if you're listening out there and give you see Michael, just give, give him a cup of coffee. Give this dude something. Jesus. Just a court, toss a quarter at him. I don't. That I was, don't know. That was a really sad story. <laughs> yeah. sad. Like, the whole thing just sad. came way down. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, start out with fame. I started out with like immense fame. Yeah, and then yeah. ended with. That'll be how he doesn't get free shit at all. That'll be eight fifty. Yeah, man. I said I had some hard hitting questions. Oh yeah, do you have more? Yeah, so I have one oh. for Matt. Oh. Um. So Matt, because we talked a little bit about how you've been in freaking everything. Um. I used to watch you in sixth grade in the in the Wedding Singer. <laughs> yes, incredible movie. Yeah. Incredible yeah. film. Yes, I love that movie. It's like um, the, the people watch that like every day. Like that's like on no, that's, a, in that's every an iconic in every yeah. language. I forget is it Easter every or something? Airplane. There's a certain time of year they they run it like crazy, and maybe they just run. I think it's the Easter Valentine's. season. Yeah, it's they definitely Sandler's between, best movie. They run it between. Yeah, it's a total Easter movie. Yes. It's a very much <laughs> no, no, no. Easter movie. I always <laughs> thought that. You know why? Because oh, wedding season wedding is, is spring. Is spring. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. So it's always that. around that time, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so you've been on a lot of big budget stuff, um, a lot of TV shows. Um, what what makes you take an indie role? Like what's what's your what may, what do you do to pick your roles? It's uh, it's really genuinely simple. It's just a story that I can do something with. Hmm. Like I'll read things and I'm like, wow, that's kind of good. I don't know that I'm the dude. Mm. There's there's plenty of times that's happened, and there's other times I've read it and I said, yeah, I or seven others could do this, mm-hmm. and that's just life. That's you know, you go for that and you go up against seven, ten, twenty, thirty other people to try to do a, a thing. But I'm not necessarily excited by certain things. I'm you know, it's my job. It's a job. So your job is to go tell stories and do the best you can do and and do a good job. But it's exciting when you like. And you, you, you begin to, the brain flips on and you just start going down things going, well, I could do that and then we could go that way with it and then that could do that. And then you just start to, you start to build while you're reading. And that's, a, that's always an inspiration. It doesn't happen all the time. Um, but I like that the most. It's just a story that I know I can do something with. If, I'm, if I start getting excited, then I'm not tired. I'm not. Yeah. I, I judge my own narcolepsy on how much I can go after something. I start to go like, oh, and then I'm laying there going, I could probably do that with it. And, I could. and then I get excited by the story. And it could be, uh, it could be a short. I've had it for a short film that I did that I was like, oh, that's an interesting idea. Let me see what I can. It's just, if, I, if it's a good story, if it's this big, I'll fill it and I like it. If it's that big, I'll fill it. It's just a matter of the story. And then you have, an, you have something to offer is really you know, to that yeah. story, to that particular story. And Matt's incredibly versatile. Like he's played like every type of role. I think like every genre. I, I don't. Is there a genre you haven't done? Musical, maybe. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. I feel no, like I was in musicals it. in theater. Hey, he's so saying in Funny Story. <laughs> yeah, Funny Story is a musical. Yeah, yeah. it's a musical. <laughs> it's a music. It's a total musical. <laughs> yes, it's a true story. If it's you whatever like you want to be out there. If you like you'll musicals, like yeah. please buy it. If you yeah. don't like musicals, it's only one scene. <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> we should have um, called it La La Land too, so it shows up right next to so La La Land. Call it Avengers. <laughs> Avengers Seven. Do you remember Avengers End Games? Yeah, see. Remember when I wrote a series and I said it was going to be called La La Land, and then the next year La La Land. Announced yeah. itself. A brutal defeat. You should have like, jumped oh, on man. that. Come on, Nick. I know. I could have been in all the SEO during that time. Everything. That's why you got to register your scripts with the Writers Guild. I uh, <laughs> no. Like that done don't shit. I know it. No, no. <laughs> they don't even know what they got over there. I no, I, I think it's less that and more like let them make the movie after I already made my series. And then my series just keeps popping up oh, when people are trying uh, to find the movie. That's good. That's, I sh- that's what Mark- should have happened. Hashtag marketing, hashtag SEO. Hey, yes. Matt, when you read this script, were you like, I'm all in, or were you like, I have some thoughts for funny story? Both. Nice. 
Yeah. I well, mean, what the hell, man? What do you got? What do you mean you got thoughts? Isn't the script so sick? Yeah, director no, this, approval. The script had a lot of problems. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I just wanted to just, just get a roundabout way of have you compliment no, me. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I yeah. it was never weird because compliment. half of it was written really well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but which half? Well, which half? Yeah, we'll never know. Huh? Um, no, no, no. I, I, it was, it was again. It was just what I was just saying. It's the same exact thing as you're reading and you're turning the pages. I'm like, I see it. You know, and it's very exciting to, you know, um, when you're in an independent like this and you're basically like you're the lead. You could really throw around some some weight and some power and be like, "Yo, I want it to be like this and all this stuff." Oh, I but was you're a so, dick on set. No, you were so such cool. Such a dick. That's my problem. Right? Such I'm like, a this dick. guy is so cool. You could have done anything you wanted. You could have wore a cape in every scene or whatever you wanted to do. <laughs> you realize that? Oh, I was recently on a movie where there was like a A list celebrity. I won't name. Well, like A minus list. Uh. Uh, but like they were like a small supporting role, but they completely changed up all like a ton of scenes. This is what I'm saying. I think I know who you're talking about. And I can't to. wait. Right? I can't wait. I was like, I mean, is this I'm like, happening? how come Matt Glaive is so cool? <laughs> Matt Glaive could have worn a snorkel and every single scene. I, I, I had some choices I wanted to bring. Could have? Um, could have wore flippers? <laughs> no, but it's like Matt has input, but it's always good. It's always to help the movie. Like there's a scene where when, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about the movie without spoiling stuff. But there's like, there were a few different points where Matt was like, I think it should go this other way, or I think this reaction should be a little different. And it just changed the dynamic of that moment and create such a great reaction from the audience. So it's like every input that Matt had was like in service of the thing. It was nothing about his ego and trying to be like, I have to wear a cape yeah. and a snorkel. Right. You know what's, you know <laughs> or what's, with beer breath, he gets in your face, he's like, I gotta make out with this chick over here. <laughs> you know what's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Matt is... And not, it's Hannah. <laughs> he's yeah. playing my daughter. Right? I don't know about that one. Um, <laughs> no, it was it was great because uh, <laughs> it's funny because you know different you know the 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 pressure the pressure cooker yeah mm -hmm. of the fifteen day shoot yeah we shot in fifteen days shot in fifteen days it's intense a lot of stuff to get in yeah a lot of things we'd be like three quarters of the day and he's like okay we got to do all our uh, young blood all the show within a show within the movie where we're showing a TV show. We had a half day. And all of a sudden we have a half day to do stunts and do fights and do all this stuff. And it was like, but, but Michael's energy is always like, okay, we're just gonna set the camera up. I'm just gonna do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, okay, we only have about 30 minutes to get four scenes. So, uh, but it was all calm <laughs> yeah. and we're still just doing it. Yeah, we do it again. Calm. And then we're always like done at dusk. And it was just, it was just one of those things where the energy but also it's a testament to, it's a testament to Michael's knowing what he wants, the calm, yeah. everybody's confidence with doing what they're doing, but a tremendously mature and cocky confident crew. Because mm. those guys were so cool and so good. Um, they were they were just so cool and so good. And they were like, we'll, we'll get it, we'll do it. We'll get it, they got it, they hooked it up, they lined it up, they made it happen. Everybody was just in sync to go with like a real kind of a crapshoot. We were in that one location for days Mm -hmm. The bed and breakfast, and uh, and and it was just like knocking everything out that had to get knocked out, and it was just great. It was uh, well, it's really helpful because the crew we work with have been on almost every project we've done, like from Internet Famous, like our DP Greg Cotton, he shot Internet Famous, both thinning movies and Funny Story. Carly Engelbrecht, our production designer, she did Internet Famous. Um, our composer Brandon Campbell, he's done all our movies, and it's like. Just having that kind of shorthand with everyone is just helps you go so much quicker. I wanted because, to ask you yeah. about that too. So there's people out there that want to get into indie filmmaking and all that. How did you start? Like, how did you put together these resources? And how, like, where where do people start if they want to go on this journey? Well, it all starts with the script. Right. That, like that's like the, the truth. And I'm not just saying that because Steve and I wrote the script. Nobody heard. <laughs> totally and stop. stay away from the microphone. Steve's yeah. nursing a Diet Coke. Please sponsor the this show. This is like 15th it. Diet Coke. <laughs> Easily. No, but, got line, lined up over there. But the script is the is not only uh, what you know what you're doing, and uh, it's really why everyone's doing it. Like that's the thing mm. that brings everyone together because anyone can write a script, but to write something that is going to make everyone say, "Oh, I want to do this," and maybe I'm not going to be paid a million dollars every day, but I want to play this role. Or the cinematographer's like, oh, I want to shoot this movie. Or it's like each person is coming to it and saying, um, there's something I can bring to it and I can collaborate on it. And it's not like, oh, you're just going to tell me how it is and force me to do everything. It's like, no, we're all going to 
collaborate on this thing together and, and try and make the best movie possible. So if you come with that attitude, I found that people are just so excited. Like they really want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of something great, something that's trying to do something fun and funny and heartfelt. And um, and if you have a, a strong opinion, like a strong vision about what you're doing and you can translate that and explain it to everyone in each department, like there's no, there's no one that would say no, short of them um, just uh, being a, a dick. <laughs> that happens too. Yeah. So, and you did you fund most of this movie? All of it. All of 100%. it. Yes. That's a hundred percent. So that's most of it. Yeah. It is all of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, did you try to go to outside funding? Uh, was that a choice, or were you like, it's not gonna get made if I don't do it? Well, yeah. It's funny because we've had like a lot of success getting these other movies going like the thinning is all at legendary you know it's like a huge company they do all the batman movies and stuff <laughs> and then uh internet famous to do with this company lakeshore and they did you know like million dollar baby and stuff so it's like we had all these connections and things but the, the issue was the way movie financing and packaging works is that you need to make something in a specific genre that you are connected with and since this was different this was like a departure for us um, there wasn't like they couldn't look back at the other movies and say, oh, yeah, this connects mm. for this audience or something. They'd be like, oh, why don't you want to make something for that's YA? Well, like, if you want to do a dystopian movie, yeah, we could probably get funding. If you want to do something that's like all about YouTube stars, yeah, we could probably get funding. But it's like we didn't want to go that route. And so that kind of took it in a different direction. And that that was the biggest feedback. So I felt like I had to bet on myself. And I've had to do this a couple of times um, where it's like you just have to put all your chips on red and say, I believe in this, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna work hard and invest in myself. And so that's what I did with this and that's what I did with Smiley when I made my first feature and even totally sketched like starting that YouTube channel. It was like, I gotta do this, I believe in it and it's gonna happen. You kinda just will it into it. Yeah, that method seems to work for you. Like you're the epitome of like someone that believes in themselves. <laughs> like a lot of people like they just aren't, you're you arrogant. know. You don't arrogant start piece like a of really work, arrogant man. guy. No. Absolutely. I mean, and maybe I shouldn't believe it myself. Somebody should say it. Maybe I should sell cars. <laughs> no. No, I I like it. I think that's inspiring because a lot of people I think, you know, they get beaten down once and they're like, Oh shit, I shouldn't try it anymore. Like I shouldn't try um anything I believe in. Yeah, well I think it also comes from just, uh, you know, we only have one life to live. And so if if you want to do something and you have the ability, even if it's risky, it's like if it's if it's your passion, you got to go for it. Because mm -hmm. like when when else can you do it? Yeah. And see, and I that's think that we all do. live in an artificial reality. And so you have to go for it because that's like the that's why like, you chose to camp. You get an unlimited yeah. amount of, of, of choices to do it. So you might as well have the most fun here. Yeah, that's true. Um, what's the what's what was the festival submission process like? Did you just find a bunch of festivals and apply or like what how does that work yeah i mean that's the crazy thing is like I, we've never really done film festivals before yeah. uh with uh, any of the other movies so this was like coming in real fresh yeah <laughs> and uh kind of with like a little bit against us because the other movies are really not festival type movies they hadn't really won awards or anything like that so this this is like a new thing and you know, people have preconceived notions, so they could look at your IMDb or look at your other work and say, I don't know, this guy who directed Thinning and stuff, like, is he trying to do a festival movie? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, they're just coming right. loaded with all that. Because it's very, a more artsy community. Yeah. Yes. And so we just literally blind submitted it to, I don't know, a handful of festivals. And we got picked in Slamdance, which was amazing. And then from there, the f other festivals heard about it and said, we want to see their Oh, movie. that's cool. And so that was a really great launch pad because, like, so Slam mind. Dance was kind of the exposure exactly. to the other festivals. And then exactly. a word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, And then people from other festivals that are checking out other festivals, they'd show up, they'd see the movie, and they'd go, come to our festival. And it just continued on that way. Yeah, and it was, it was really cool because you'd screen the movie in some town like Sonoma, mm -hmm. and it would be sold out. Like, we'd show up, because you never know. It was like, yeah. awesome. You never, Sonoma was you, great. You so never cool. know if people are going to be there or not, because, like, we don't really have the means to promote it within a community. And it's like, so there could be four people there, it could be sold out. So we show up and it's like sold out all these places and they're adding screenings and things. It's like, oh my God, like That's there was just so a demand cool. for it. And people would tell their friends and be like, oh, it's playing next Tuesday, you gotta go. And so it was just like, in each of these communities, like it was just being spread. Like Breckenridge. Dude, in our family, nobody gives a shit oh, to yeah. watch anything that That's we make. That's so true. And then, all, and then this movie, and they're like, yeah, we want to see all it. of it. Uh, my mom tells <laughs> yeah. every single person she can t talk yeah. to about it, and my um, all my aunts, they're just, they're obsessed with it. They're like, when do I get to actually watch it, yeah, though? Yeah, when can I show When's my neighbor? Out? When can I show my friend? 
Yeah. yeah. So now they can. Now, now you can, can go You're to right iTunes now, you and go do that. How's that? The, speaking of iTunes, like mm. the distribution process, I'm just getting all these processes out because oh, sure. I think these, this is like a first, like the festival was a first mm. for you and stuff. And I think people that want to make their own movies or want to attempt to try to go this route, um, I just want them to know like what's in what's in, sto- in store for them. Yeah. Um, well, so yeah, distribution was tricky. What we ended up going with this company called Blue Fox Entertainment. And so they are kind of the intermediary between like getting the movie onto different platforms and you know, making sure it's seen on TV and DVD and all that kind of stuff, and making sure it gets into the And they found you through the festivals, or how'd they find yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, so I, through the festivals, uh, you know, the movie gets reviewed and written up, and, you know, people say, like, oh, yeah, we've gotten really, like, nothing but glowing reviews so far. Yeah. And so from that, the buzz was really positive, so we just get people reaching out from, you know, various companies saying like, oh, we want to watch your movie, like we're considering it for distribution. And so uh, Blue Fox is one of those. So I think it all comes down to have a good story, <laughs> write a good script, and then- Do it well. Yeah, make yeah. a good product. Yeah, do a good job. Just do, do a good, good job. job. Yeah. You need to do a good job. Do good. Don't suck. Do good, don't suck. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um. No, I, I'm, we've been extremely lucky, and I think our team is, is really great. And I think we had the benefit of doing several other features. Yeah. So we could come into this with all the knowledge of how to do something on a tight timeline, on a budget, and and really just empower everyone to make the best movie possible. Yeah, that's how you had the confidence to do those four scenes in like a half an hour, knowing that the crew is capable, every, you've done this before, you've seen it happen. Well, it's like, I mean, you remember doing Totally Sketch like how many, 10 years ago. Can you believe it's been 10 years? No, I, I just was freaking out the other day. No, t- yeah, you but, would be like, uh, come by for a two hour shoot. And 13 hours later, I'd be true. asleep in your closet. Like, are we done? Are we done yet? <laughs> but it's like, you remember how we'd shoot yeah. those. Like, it was quick. Like, we'd shoot a lot. I mean, those interactive videos, yeah. like, there are so many different options that you'd have to film. It's like, we film the main story and then we film like six different branches of it. Yeah. And so it's like, it's a lot of takes, it's a lot of coverage. Yeah, the Valentine's Day quick. ones were like little mini movies. Yeah, they're like 45 minute, yeah. hour like long movies. Three that, days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three days of and shooting. The energy that Matt's talking about. Michael never raises voice to anybody. He's never stressed about anything. Yeah, he just true. walks around, wears Bermuda shorts, and just you can't is tell like, if Let's he's scolding it. you or, or praising you. <laughs> it's the best. I knew I wore shorts too much when, um, as a gift, as a rap gift, Matt got me a pair of shorts. Yeah, I was, <laughs> but, of, but fleece, what kind of shorts? They're fleece. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to go. get fleece shorts for Slam Dance. In Park City, Utah, in the winter, they didn't come in time. But I want. I'm like, man, we're going to a cold place. You're going to need so... something warm. Fleece shorts. That or fleece just shorts. A gift card from Tommy Bahama, and you're good. <laughs> yep, it's fun. You're very good. That's so. That's a troll move. You're a troll. Is that really? I think yeah. it's a good troll. Yeah. yeah. Getting him shorts. You, you should have got him shorts that are attached to sandals. So they're they're, they're actually physically shorts attached with a string. Attached to sandals. Yeah. See. So I'll, you can't lose your sandals. To be fair, I don't wear socks with my sandals or my. That's shorts. true. I've never seen that. Thank you. You always barefoot. I want that on things. the record. I, it's on the record. It's on the record. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm curious on your your as end because we haven't talked about Nikki. Yeah, Rimo's. ask us questions. Yes. How about interview them? <laughs> yeah, please. Finally, a question for God. us. But Nikki, like working and doing totally sketch and smiley and then funny story. Did you notice like a change in the process? Oh, definitely an evolution and the type of for content? sure the content. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. The scripts um, are different. Yeah, I, I remember on totally sketch just a lot of like, can we not um, have our boobs out this this scene? Can we? Can we not wear? Um, t- to which no, Steve's no answer is no. No, the answer is no. Um, like, it was a firm I, no. For me, it, I didn't care no. about my boobs really, but my stomach, I like really never wanted to show. And so whenever he's like, wear a bikini top, I'm like, I just don't want to. Like, can we do it without the bikini top? <laughs> Your situation? butt's in some pretty good gifs out there. I don't. Yeah, my butt's fine. Some, some my butt's sketch, out there. Some totally my butt has uh, been out there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could hide it really. The internet but, uh, owns owns you. Yeah, I think sure. I think a lot of Totally Sketch was like thumbnail oriented and um, sex comedy and like very uh, easy the easy laughs. Yeah, li- yeah. maybe well, you, some might call lowest common denominator. Yes. some might call some that. Some might call it that. <laughs> I call it comedy. Yes, <laughs> some might call it innovative with his interactive storytelling. Thank you. Yes. My Thank demo- you, Matt. Exactly. Back then, when I used to get someone uh, in my <laughs> goddamn corner. <laughs> Back. When I used to get, I always said, set the jiggle factor to fucking high. Dude. <laughs> yes, yes. When I used to get trickle down audience from your audience, it, my my demographic on YouTube was ninety percent male, um, almost a hundred percent eight to thirteen year olds. Wow. Yes, and now it is sixty percent women in their to like early twenties to mid thirties. 
The times have changed. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with Smiley, I felt like very much like it was like a your it was your debut directorial debut, and it was fun. But it was it was familiar faces, a lot of YouTubers, so it felt like kind of like a big YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, you know? sure. Well, I and mean, it was that wasn't a knock on Smiley, but like it felt familiar. It felt very like. Oh, is this a real movie? You know, and then thank you. I think <laughs> felt safe, very safe. We almost put that um, review on the poster because it was one of the better ones. I'm just trying to say you've grown a long way. Yeah. This is how I compliment. This is real. This is what all my life kids with are going to go through. Call this, is my, this is my life with this woman, Damn, dude. I, think I'm I don't so get compliments. I think I'm I just have so a hard time or an easier time. I think she's getting to the part where she says really I, nice okay, stuff. Yeah, I, think, I feel like the whole time I've been complimenting you. <laughs> Not what she thinks. In my head, I'm like, wow, I'm just, he should be loving this right now. Oh my God. I, one of my favorite scenes in Smiley was when the, they have sex with Santa Claus. Is that in there? <laughs> that is a great is that, scene. That is oh, a great scene watching. in Smiley. That is a sketch that we did with Tony Cavallaro, who's in the dirt on Netflix, playing Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. Hope great. that's okay oh, with yeah, everybody. Yeah. Hope that's okay. Yeah. When I think I, that should be legal. I first met him in a in a sketch that, that never came out um, that Maker did, and he played oh, a stripper yeah. that I was on a date with. Oh, yeah. Fun. Hi, Tony. Um, anyway, let me get to the compliments. So like uh, that. So I'm just saying those were that was the beginning of the career almost 10 years ago, which was crazy. Um, it's, 10, it's over 10 years. Yeah. Well, the smiley was 2011. Oh, yeah, and then came out 2012. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that and then the evolution of going to. Um, well, I wasn't in Internet Famous or The Thinning, so I can't really talk about like how that, how set, that was different. What, what you know, like. how that was different or about anything. It. Uh, no, it's cool. Okay. Um, but I can tell you that I loved Funny Story, and I thought that it was just so grown up and adult, and uh, like very much felt like a real movie, and like uh, it felt very very professional. I never once was like, "Oh, this is like a sketch," you know. It was mm -hmm. like grounded and good story, great script. I didn't never read the script and was like, "Oh, this isn't." realistic or there's too many boobs in this uh, you had some boobs in it yeah, but i felt like it was boobs. tasteful and it was not gratuitous we had tasteful nudity tasteful nudity tasteful. it was also an alt title for the film <laughs> it was <laughs> diverse it. it's a uh, lgbt friendly yes. uh got like all the got all the things very inclusive. It's got everything you want in a movie. Everything you want. Matt, Jana's very wet in a scene. Jan yeah. Jana is in Full frontal the frontal <laughs> Matt is nude in the film. Matt yeah. gets Matt has one of the I think I'm gonna say I'm gonna try and get this on all the list, but one of the top shower scenes of all time. I, he's very wet. I will say he is drenched in that scene. And that's how, would you how I describe the scene? shower scene. When you read the script, you said there was a nude scene, and there, he said and, and there was a singing scene, and he's like, I'm really afraid of the nude scene, aka the singing when, scene. when I sing. Yeah. That he was had the no only problem being about. in the shower. No, the only thing that's important about the film, <laughs> and it's a funny thing, because um, because I've done different kinds of comedy. Uh, so you have your like, you know, your airplane, your naked gun, my babies types, right? Which like I Andy work Tribeca. on Angie Tribeca. That's a great show. Um, which is great. It's one of my f absolute favorites. And um, and then there's like uh. I should do a litany of my own work and it'll sound like I'm bragging. Do better, it, better, do it. Better you Things, can, which I really love, Better Things is is exceedingly awkward uh, anti-comedy, Pam Adlon's show. Nice. If you guys have seen it. Haven't it's, seen it. I haven't watch it. it. I watch it. It's I'm not kidding. It's fantastic. It's Pam's life. I play her ex-husband. It's an award-winning show. And it's, nice. and it's, and, but it's an anti-comedy. It's all just unfolds in time and it's just awkward, awful, but it's cringe funny. Like um, The Office? Uh, no, not at all like The Office. Oh, okay. There's no style to it. There's no camera moving in and then giving you like, this is what that meant. Mm. None of that. It just travels with her. Okay. Through oh, cool. her life. Nice. It just travels and shit unfolds and you're like, it's more like you're looking in the windows. Mm. It's that kind of voyeuristic. That's what I wanted out of Funny Story because I thought that uh, sometimes you have to punch it. Sometimes you got to ham it. Sometimes you got to do all these things. And other times I've told Michael over and over through filming the movie, pull me back if I get, if I try to be funny. If I try to be funny, bring the hammer down because you don't want to try to be funny in that film. It just has to be funny. It has to be a circumstance. Yes. Otherwise it's it's a bust. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ego trip of, wasn't that funny? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's nothing in that movie that's supposed to be wasn't that funny. It's funny because it's real. Right. It, we're um, laughing at your pain. Yeah. But and your so, pain and has so, to be so real. And so the, the reason for that, the reason for me again. to bring that up is, what is the shower scene? 
he's like, what are we going to do? And I'm like, what are we going to do? And it's like, it just has to, it just has to happen. Yeah. That's all that's going to happen. Yeah. It was hilarious. It's just going to happen. And because it was so real, it's just get the fuck out of there. How wet is what it's about? (laughs) How wet would you say you were in that scene? I was moist at first. Yeah. And then I was full on wet at the end. You were just (laughs) dripping wet. I was like, this guy's having a hard time in there. I, I was. I started dry, but we worked into it slowly, and then I was moist. <laughs> yeah, wow. and then I was wet. And on that note, we have some final thoughts <laughs> coming up. <laughs> I know which one uh, I'm going to use for an Instagram clip. Oh. <laughs> got a good, pretty good feeling about that. We know one. how to promote this film. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael, yes. a final thought to wrap up today's events. Well, I just I want to say I'm really proud of you guys because oh I've been watching you over the years from little babies. I knew you as baby actors, and then I saw you grow up and become <laughs> teenage lovers, and now you're grown <laughs> married couple. And it's really beautiful. Thank you, brother. Because you're so talented as performers, as writers, as comedians, humorous. Can I say that? You can. Podcast we t- we tickle your funny extraordinaires. <laughs> yeah, you guys make me laugh more than probably anyone in the world. And so I'm just so proud of you that you found each other and that you're doing this for an audience of what I've been told, 15 million people. It's huge. Daily. Yes, it's, yes 15 and million listen to it's this podcast. Just, it's just a dream to be here. Thanks, uh, Dad. Again. And, uh, is that and how you're supposed you to compliment people? Yes, it is. Oh, Nikki. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, shit. That's way different than what I did. But no, I want. No, <laughs> in all seriousness, you guys are great. So. Well, love, we love I you, Michael. Michael. Yeah, I love you're you my brother. Go watch his movie. Yes, please go watch God the movie. He's begging it. you. <laughs> He's on his knees begging you. And no, we're very indifferent and if you watch the movie, but we're letting you know it's out there if you want to see. I'm going to beg you. <laughs> oh, please watch this fucking movie. Oh, my no, God. I think, I think people will be surprised. They'll have a good time. They'll laugh. They'll, they'll call their parents. I think so. <laughs> or their children, depending on how old they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, any final thoughts today? Uh, I will build on Michael and say I'm proud of all of us because it's a very unique and rare thing to from nothing make something and it's a complete something it's a it's a good story well told it's a very simple idea and it's very difficult to do it's very difficult to do something simple Mm -hmm. that is clean has a clean story has a clean idea and nobody moves around in their seat during the movie it's not a shifting movie it's a movie where everyone leans forward and then it's over and you're like that's all i've ever asked of in a story is to just want to turn the page and then be like, oh, that was a good book. That was a good read. That was a good watch. And then you're like, go. Oh. And then you want to talk about it because you do. And so I'm proud of all of us because it was like a coming together of good ideas and good skill sets to, to all uh, do something better than yourself. Because yeah. it is best. At its best, it's better than you. It's, be- it's better than you would have imagined because it's, a good, it's above you. It's better than you. It's a story, right? This movie's better than you. It's better than you are. You know, this movie's better than the audience. (laughs) Hell yeah, I love it. We're going aggressive. We're going hard. Go in with it. No, but two different dad styles. But you feel good about yourself at the end of the movie. It's still better than you. (laughs) I love it. And I know. I mean, you know what I mean. It's 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 like. It's exciting to be part of a good story well told. And that's a simple thing that's hard to do. And I know you've seen Matt in a ton of movies and stuff, but you've never seen him like this. No, like, man. He's so nuanced, yeah. so great. Like, he's gotten tremendous reviews. I totally even... unlike his other movies where he's just flat. <laughs> just flat. Total... <laughs> it, 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 Boring. It's oh, uninspired. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying. <laughs> that's what you just said. He's always incredible. Like his other movies. And he's even more incredible <laughs> in this I'm one. I'm so sorry, How Matt. do you give a man a compliment? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, we just like to take him away. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> No, man, I, that's my final thought, is Matt Glaive put, if you ever seen this video out there of where uh, a Packers player in a Madden game breaks his oh leg and he puts Greg the team Jennings. on his back. Greg Jennings put the freaking <laughs> team on his back. Matt Glaive puts the fucking team on his back, dude. This movie is Matt Glaive's, like, fucking panacea, dude. You are incredible in this movie. I thought the team played pretty well, though. No, 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 no. The team's great. Okay. But Matt Glaive got the whole team on his back got running Emily towards Bay. the end zone. <laughs> yeah. And the, that, it's just like this video. The score is already 52 to fucking 30. You don't need to score the touchdown. But Matt's going to score the touchdown for the team anyway because he's just that good. That's how good Matt Glaive is at acting in this movie. And uh, yeah, man, I, I just love Walter. I I want a sequel. I'll say it. I want a sequel because I want to hang with the guy more. I just like the guy. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I like you as him, and I I just want to see you in everything. And yeah. I hope that you're in everything that we ever well, do. Well, he is in everything. And I, I hope I that hope you continue to be in everything. I, I hope, hope so too. <laughs> that we make a teen movie and you play a teenager in the movie. I would be you know, honored. Ste- Step Brothers, they basically you know did that. Yeah. I want to do it. We could do our kid food yeah. movie with Matt as one of the boys. Oh, yeah. Or our first day of high school movie. There you go. 
or you're you're a transfer student. I love Outstanding. it. Outstanding. We're just coming up with this on the spot. See Good. what I'm saying? But you'll see it in We'll see he's from Dominican Republic. <laughs> He's the new he's the new baseball player for yeah, the team. But all the <laughs> teachers are played by children. There you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, see? This is a great movie. This is our next movie. Just no, and sure. then real quick too. Michael, dude, this like what Matt was saying earlier, where um some things you you're like, oh, I really like this. Um, I want this to be in the movie. And then when you watch it, you're like, wait, why isn't that in the movie? But then you watch the movie and you're like, it doesn't need it. And Michael's so good at identifying the things that you think you need and you don't, and just going, Nope, you don't need it. I feel like I feel like I got a good eye for that when it comes to jokies and stuff. But this cat does it for what, whether it's you know part of integrating theme or like what, what it's got to do with like putting scenes together. And you're like, well, what about this scene? If these two don't bridge to each other. Oh no! You, you don't. Like, he takes all the air out of the things that you think that you need, and, He's he, and he gets calm. right to the meat of what you of what it is. You're like the opposite of me. I'm always like in a panic, and you're always just very calm. Very calm. Like even Zen when Gallagher. Like, yes. yes. Even when like it's really stressful things, like I remember like during Smiley and like during oh even like your friends days when mm. you guys were scrambling to like go to Kinkos and make posters and stuff, oh, yeah. and like you guys were scrambling and like you would say the words like we're scrambling and we're stressed right now, but on the outside you're just you and Jana are just like so fucking calm. True, <laughs> like, and that's the other thing we got to pimp out Jana. We haven't yeah. even talked Jana. about Jana. I know you got to wrap. I know you got to wrap. I said how how very dripping she was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a review, <laughs> but no. Uh, Jana plays uh, Mac Glaive's daughter, and she also co-produced. And she it. produced the film. Yeah. The yeah. And she is With amazing. She's amazing she's, in she's the amazing. movie. And uh, Emily Bett Rickards plays uh, Emily. Uh, plays Kim. She's Kim, Felicity in from the Arrow. Show. Arrow. Felicity in Arrow. Yes. And uh, this is, I think, her first lead role. And she, she killed it. Yeah, she's so she's good. She's great. And she she plays a really tough uh, character who goes through who goes through a tremendous amount and. Uh, also, as a person, Emily Bett is just like one of those people that you just want to be best friends with, or you feel like you're best friends with her. Like yeah. she's, oh, she's incredible. She's very like just such a good person. Yeah, we were so lucky to have you know such yeah. cool people for the whole shoot. There it was, was so no there was, there was no bad egg. No, you know? no. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you get a bad egg and they throw the whole thing like, off. Ugh. But this, we had like the greatest Everything crew, the awesome. greatest cast. Like it was just fun. It yeah, was, it's been a joy. To my do final this. thought is this is uh, my favorite project that I've ever been part of. So. There's that. And, and you get to see a side of Nicky Limo you haven't seen. That's true. I do take my shirt off still. Yes. Uh, but I, I wear like That's a That's the side that they know. But yeah. we're talking about a side that maybe perhaps they haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, also, my favorite script that either of you have written, not that you the other scripts are bad or anything. They're great. But this is my favorite This is how one. she compliments This is my favorite one. I can't one. wait till you guys have children and be like, this is my favorite child. Yep. The other ones we are, are great. Have favorites. Fine. The other kids are fine. We've yep. already decide, decided <laughs> we will have that we will have favorites. I said I'm not going to say mine. He said he's going to tell them which one. Daily. Matt, do you have a favorite child? Well, no, I was gonna say I was gonna imagine you guys like like before you even have them, you just pick like your second's probably gonna be your favorite. I and think just, first. I think the first one, yeah. Yeah, because we're both first childs. So, yeah. Like, um, well, he's the first boy. The first so. boy. We kind of already Can't, have a bias. I had a, I had a favorite child. I'm yeah. not the first man. I did have a favorite child until had, the second one until, was. No, born. I, mean, I mean, I know it sounds cheesy, but it was like I didn't want a, a second child at first because I was like, but I'm gonna not know how to split it. I don't yeah. know how to do that. And then my second dog, and it was just like, it's amazing. You just kind of widen your base, and you got more room, and that's all there is. Are you no putting me on? It's crazy. Hang on, we'll turn it off. We're turning it off. It's off. <laughs> turn this shit it's off. Completely, it's completely off. Okay, we're You're off You're off the record. I see red right. lights. No, no, no. no I no, have no, one no, no, favorite. Okay. I do have a favorite. You do have a favorite. Yeah, and her name is Rose. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, always, it's, and I'm not kidding. I'll say it again, and just to be clear. Yeah. I heard and that And I, I absolutely Roxanne. adore her the most. <laughs> all right. You know, that's the only name you remember. I love it. Where can they find you? At totally sketch on Instagram. Don't find Mac Lave on Instagram. You won't find him. <laughs> I'm trying Unless to get you're there. in the Hamilton you know family I have or whatever. I get one of my favorite daughters to open up my Instagram. Account. Okay, and please do. do it. Can already, you please do yeah. Instagram? We would love to tag you on. I, stuff. I'm gonna do it today. Yes. yes. I'm gonna call Roxy today and say she's she's director of media for me now. So oh, okay. I just hired a PR firm. There you named go, Roxy. <laughs> I that's love a, a good it. demographic I to be it. a yeah. media Pers firm. His social media managers yeah. and stuff. That's a good age. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on iTunes at Funny Story. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I plugged it. And what uh, about Amazon? How does it, where does one find it on Amazon? I think I think if you just type in Funny Story, movie, watch it, it'll show up on it's Google. Now, it's now for Amazon? No, when uh, when the time they watch it, it's out. I see. Now it's not out. Oh, but it will be. Yeah. I understand. So we're talking about the future. Yeah. We're doing some time travel here. Mm -hmm. You can also just go to Put Locker. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and we're oh <laughs>